Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Lori McGuire. I'm live in beautiful Laguna Niguel, and the backdrop is Laguna Niguel. So you will see it's really uh, foggy outside, but uh, I will switch it around, and you will see I'm really on top of a hill, and uh, I'll show you towards the coastline as well as some of the homes around here. But, uh, oh, it's, it's really beautiful, and it's going to be, gosh, about 83 degrees here today. So I'm going to switch it around. Okay. Uh, so down over here, you will see the ocean. Uh, the Pacific Coast is right over there. This is a neighborhood called Coronado Point. Um, beautiful homes ranging, gosh, you know, in the 2 million all the way up to four million dollar price range um, when they're backing on this side they have mainly city views and some ocean views and then when they're backing on this other side they are backing to the trail which has really great ocean views just so you know and then if you see the homes more up the hill uh, that is monarch point and they can go up in price, you know, they really start in the three to four million range and they go up in price to about eight million dollars. And then you go to the very top over there and uh, gosh, you know, they are, th those are some properties that are um, Monarch Summit 1, Monarch Summit 2. Um, so um, they're, oh, hi Stuart, I just want to say hi. And uh, those are um, over 55 community and then there's under 55 community, but they have great views. Uh, actually, no, these are right here, Niguel Summit. Those are Niguel Summit properties. Um, <laughs> I'm usually used to hiking at the very top there, so I apologize. Uh, Monarch Point is beyond that. So um, I'll do that tomorrow, so you'll see Monarch Point. This is what happens when you're live. Okay, down here is still, this is all Niguel uh, Summit development. And these homes uh, run in the million dollar range, like they could be 800 to uh, 800,000 to 2 million. And these are the Paragons and the Portofinos are on this other side. And you'll see, um, this is all Laguna Niguel right here. And there's a golf course and the El Niguel Country Club. Oh, good morning, Raylene. I can't wait to see you today. And uh, then over here, that is where the library is in Laguna Niguel. I just wish it was a clear day, my goodness. And then I'm going to just walk you over here and I promise I'll get into my topic. Okay, this is clearer over here. Um, okay, over here, you have the neighborhood of Palmi Palmilla. And it is also in Niguel Summit. And you have some beautiful estates looking over the, for the city light views and also for the ocean um, as well. And gosh, they, there are a couple on the market above 3 million. They sell the 2 million to the 4 million price point. Um, I actually sold one at five, gosh, it was I think 5.2 million um, many, many years ago when the market was really hot, like in two, um, two, uh, 2006. Okay, so then over here, oh, and all that is Miguel Summit. And then all in here, you're looking out towards Mission Viejo. And when you hear about Cota de Casa, all of those areas, that's the mountains. And it's beautiful in the wintertime when you see the snow-capped mountains. So I'm gonna turn it around. And I first wanna say hi to jo Joe. And of course, um, I always appreciate you guys watching, but let me turn it around now. Okay, hello. Um, Oh, I want to also introduce you, um, for those of you who don't know about my, my dog, Juno, I have a little story of what I'm grateful for today, and it has to do with her. And she is right there. Well, I better turn it around so you can see her. Okay, so that's Juno, my wonderful little whippet, who is nine years old. And I'm going to turn this around. Okay, okay. so uh, one of the things I thought I would talk about today and I'm going to have a little backdrop be Laguna Niguel, uh, is every single day I focus on what I'm grateful for. And 
yesterday I did my first live video in, a, in gosh, three weeks because of course I had been out sick with the Epstein-Barr virus. Um, and so I was very grateful to be doing that. And I feel great today. So uh, today I'm grateful for going in the office and I'm gonna be uh, meeting with some uh, my, my wonderful team, seeing their smiling faces. And uh, also I have a listing appointment and oh, just so many great things. I, you know, I just love to be out. And, but yesterday, um, the thing I'm grateful for is, you know, I just had a, I had an appointment with um, a cancer vet um, because I was concerned about my dog. And she has these little tags on her, you know, for uh, like melanoma. And I just get them checked up. Um, I get her checked up every now and then. So I just went in there for that. But then I mentioned to the vet that she had been hacking, you know, for quite a few weeks. Um, and I just thought it was like a cold that was going around with dogs. And uh, so I was explaining it all and he was saying, well, there's really not a cold, you know, that goes around. And so uh, he discovered that she had a heart murmur. So then <laughs> long drawn out thing happened. And she said, well, she may be in congestive heart failure. And I'm like going, oh my gosh. So I was really trying to, you know, practice just being calm um, because I was there at the vet for a couple hours and they were doing all these tests, x-rays and all that. And it turns out, even though she has a heart uh, murmur, she is fine. Her x-rays turned out great, ultrasound is fine. Um, so I'm really grateful for that. So, you know, I um, really like to focus on the positive, those of you who know me. And uh, every morning I write down, you know, three things that I'm grateful for. for um, going forward in the morning and then at night I reflect on the three things I was grateful for um, that day so of course I was very grateful for that so I challenge each and every one of you to write to just type in what you are grateful for from yesterday and it could be anything I'm just you know really I, I say this to my team all the time I always ask them what are you grateful for and you know for like even my mom when I'm talking to her um, because we can't be in a state of fear, we can't be in a state of uh, depression, um, or you know, poor me or whatever. And I'm not saying any of them are ever you know in that state, but at least it uh, keeps us in that uh, gratitude state where we appreciate our lives, we appreciate things. And uh, so, if we're constantly doing that, reminding ourselves. Uh, boy, life looks so much better. And I mean, it could be so much worse if you think about what's going on in the world. And, you know, we could be living in another country where we don't have freedom. So, you know, I challenge you to type in what you are grateful for, like from yesterday. Was there, you know, anything that brought you closer to your goals? Um, and I've been doing this. I actually have been doing it since, um, gosh, maybe 30 something years. Um, because I listened or actually read a book back then they didn't have audible books but um, I read a book um, and I think it was Brian Tracy well the most powerful book I ever read was The Power of Positive Thinking by Norman Vincent Pill and I read that when I was I think 18 years old and I mean it's an ancient book but it really um, made a difference in my life and I go back to that book every now and then so, uh, but the one thing with Brian Tracy, you know, he was always saying, uh, he always says that anything you read, um, you know, uh, anything that you listen to makes a difference. Even though you don't think it does, um, it does. Like, you know, any inspirational thing, it will come out somehow. And I really noticed that. And I started journaling when I was very young, but I started journaling in a different way where I was doing more, you know, gratitude and I was, uh, watching Oprah a lot back then so I would tape all her shows and I would watch them when I would get home and uh, it so happened I was on the Oprah show in the year 2000 so uh, and it was really weird because I journaled about it like I am on the Oprah Winfrey show by the year 2000 and it's a miracle of you know I I personally think it's God's power in the universe but it's whatever you want to say it is but it's the miracle of the you know the power of the universe but I really believe whatever I put down on paper and I really visualize it does come 
true, but I have to really internalize it and believe it. And I have to, um, you know, also work hard, obviously. But it was really funny because I, uh, just about the Oprah thing, you know, funny situation, funny story. But I wrote about it because I would always write out all my goals and I would write them in present tense for, you know, every single day I'd write them out. But I would, like, really crazy. I mean, I would write, like, too many. And I was like, I am on the Oprah Winfrey show by year 2000 because I really wanted to meet her. And it wasn't enough to just meet her. I wanted to be on the show. So January of 2000, I got a call from Harpo Productions. And I thought it was a joke. I thought it was one of my friends that was playing uh, a joke on me. And uh, they said, uh, this is Jillian Strauss from Harpo Productions. And uh, we have a show coming up on op entrepreneurial women. And uh, with Gary Zukov is going to, you know, the author of Seat of the Soul is going to be on it. And we would like to interview you uh, to see if you'll be a good candidate for it. And I was on my way to a listing appointment in Irvine. I'll always remember it. And yeah, good to see you. And Candace, miss you guys. And uh, I just said, I was just like, oh, this is a joke. Who, what friend is this? You know, because all my friends knew that Oprah uh, was like a mentor of mine because I always watched her show and everything. And uh, so anyway, I finally realized because I looked at the cell phone and it had a Chicago number. I mean, it had a different area code. I didn't know for sure it was Chicago, but, uh, and then I just said, oh my gosh, well, I would love to talk to you. I'm actually <laughs> going into an appointment. And uh, so she scheduled a call uh, to talk to me at another time. And then um, we had a long interview. It was literally for 45 minutes. Um, and they um, then, she got back to me and said, yeah, we want you on the show. And by the way, we're having a filming crew coming out to your home tomorrow, <laughs> which was crazy. Uh, oh no, Monday. We're gonna have a filming crew at your house on Monday. And so, um, because I found out I was gonna be on the show on a Sunday, because Saturday was when they called, and I was on my way to the listing appointment. And then Sunday, uh, I found out I was on the show and I was like, what the heck is going on? And, uh, and so I was calling in favors to everyone. And uh, thanks, Jack. And uh, so I was calling a favor to my house cleaner because I was like, oh my gosh, my house is a disaster zone right now. I need to get that up and running. Because uh, I'm not one of these kind of people that like leaves everything perfect. I mean, because I'm usually in a whirlwind. So that's why I need people to help me. <laughs> um, but I am like when it comes to work, I'm very fastidious, I promise. <laughs> so, uh, you know, one of my buggy boos about that. Okay, and then um, I called in like my hairdresser because normally, you know, they don't work on, you know, Mondays. A lot of times they are off. So I was asking all these favors. And so the filming crew came in from Los Angeles because, you know, on a lot of these shows, like the Oprah Winfrey show, they had, they always have a, um, a production crew in Los Angeles, in New York, they have like them in different big cities. So they came in from Los Angeles and they spent all day with me. And we were filming at my my house, we were filming my life, my entire, my entire life, like, you know, my home. And then we went to the office and we filmed my, um, my team, you know, m me working with my team. The life in the day of, of Laurie McGuire was like, like, so funny. Me running at the harbor, Dana Point Harbor, and then they flew me to Chicago on Wednesday. I mean, it was such a whirlwind, and I was being filmed in front of, with Oprah, right in front of me, on Thursday. So it happened with, in less than a week, of finding out I was gonna be on the show, all of a sudden, Oprah Winfrey was right in front of me, asking me questions. And I, you know, I just still remember when she walked out, and uh, I just kept, it was like a surreal moment. I was like thinking, wow, I can't believe this is Oprah Winfrey in front of me. And we had a chance to talk after the show, which was really great. But, you know, when you first meet someone and you're like, you know, you're not sure if it's for real and, and yet the cameras were on me, but I just had to kind of click back into reality, like, oh, wow. <laughs> so it was a really awesome show. And then I met Gary Zukoff, the author of Seed of the Soul, which is a, a great, great book. And it really helped me out later um, back in 2008 
when the market crumbled and I was going through some hardships, I went to that book because I needed it because uh, gosh, in you know, 2007 was when it was really crumbling. But I was going through hardships and I needed to connect to my soul. So if any of you are going through hard times, I really recommend that you read that book because there is so much to it, Seed of the Soul. And it talks about, you know, uh, you know, you could have all these things going on around you. You could be like, maybe you're suffering financially. And that was what was happening with me. I mean, <laughs> the world was keeping in on me because my overhead was so high, real estate was dropping, you know, with my sales. And uh, it was a lot of learning lessons because I had way reinvest, you know, reinvested and reinvested in real estate as well. And, uh, but anyway, make a long story short, I got through it and I am so much more grateful about everything now because I had to go through that experience. So would I do things differently? Maybe I would, I mean, I would change some things. <laughs> I would have rather walked away with a couple million dollars than not walked away with anything on my house. But I probably wouldn't have learned a lesson if I had done that. So I guess, you know, in retrospect, I, you know, really wouldn't have, you know, wanted to go back. Uh, so, but I'm now earning that extra couple million dollars that I lost. So everything to me personally, and I know this is hard for a lot of people who are going through hardships, I believe things happen for a reason. Uh, but that's really hard when you're going through a lot, you know, to, and when, one thing I will tell you that is really resonating with me with this book called The Miracle Morning. And I shared about it yesterday, uh, and it's by Hal Elrod. And I'm gonna keep talking about it, and I don't care if it's driving you all crazy, because I think it is such an amazing book. And in fact, we're gonna have a team meeting, ladies, if any of you are watching, and we're gonna watch Hal Elrod on YouTube for all of you out there. Uh, who aren't on my team of course um there's a youtube video that is pretty recent it's like in the last month and you could look up hal elrod on youtube and he was speaking at a at a uh, a convention for women with women and he is bald you'll see he's bald in it and you know he's really a good looking guy tall he's normally like 185 pounds and you know, he's always keeping himself up in shape. In this video, he's like 125 pounds because he um, was just going through cancer treatment. Like he had to go through chemotherapy and everything. And he was on YouTube giving this speech for a, uh, about an hour and it was so mesmerizing. Uh, and I watch a lot of speeches and stuff, but it was so mesmerizing, and uh, this is this is a guy who's who's gone through hardship. Okay, first of all, he was a Cutco salesperson. He was the um, number one Cutco salesperson in his region. So, like, you know, he wasn't number one in the United States, but for like, you know, wherever his area was, maybe you know, half. He was like number. There were two top Cutco salespeople in the United States, and he was one of them. And he was coming from a conference and he was really excited and he the last thing he remembers and I'll tell you this I'm not ruining the story for you but uh, he remembers that he was about to call his parents but it was a little too late you know because he was coming back from this conference he was all pumped up he'd gotten this big award and he was gonna call them and just say hey I love you and everything I'm so jazzed and all that but he didn't because he didn't want to wake them up because he thought oh they're probably asleep then all of a sudden, he wakes up in a hospital, and then he discovered that he was in a uh, accident where someone literally went straight into him. So they were going in the opposite direction. He was going 70 miles per hour. The other person was going 70 miles per hour. So they impacted at 140 miles per hour. He was in a coma for seven days. He had died for six minutes. This guy, and uh, he broke like all the bones in half his body. I mean, they said he was never gonna walk. He was gonna have brain damage. I mean, this is just one of his challenges that he went through. But, you know, one of the things in Cutco that he learned was that you take 
you give yourself five minutes to get over something that you know you're really upset about you know like if you like with cut colors just say you had a really tough client and customer and you're really upset you allow yourself five minutes and so maybe you go in your car and you scream you know, like ah, you know whatever and I was telling my sales partners this on our morning call a couple days ago and you know all of us get frustrated every now and then but only give yourself five minutes you know or five minutes to feel sorry for yourself and then after that um, you say the words can't change it you can't change it okay what is it going to do to continue berating yourself about it and you know ruining your life you know um, and I know it's easy for someone like me right now to say that because some of you may be going through struggles you may have cancer right now um, and you're like oh yeah that's easy for you to say because you're not struggling it on with a day-to-day -day basis but what is it serving you by letting it fester in your body and everything so what he did was when he started getting better and he was in the hospital for six months um, I guess the doctors went to his parents and said we're really concerned about him because we think he's not realistic I mean he's so happy and he makes all of us happy and and uh, he just is you know um, always you know smiling and and you know then the parents went up to him and said are you okay we just want to make sure you're okay and you know because I we know that you have really you know it's really tough news and and you've been you know always been very athletic and and he said no you know what um, I've accepted the worst case scenario the worst case scenario is I'm gonna be in a wheelchair and you know I what can I do about it and the best case scenario is I'm, I'm not going to be and I'm gonna walk and I was like God, I can't believe this I mean he talks about this in this YouTube video and I'm thinking whoa this is crazy because <laughs> I don't go nearly you know my stuff is not nearly as tough as that and he gave himself five minutes in the hospital and you know hospital staff you know they all witnessed this and his family and he said um, can't change it and from that point forward he was determined to start walking and everything so to make a long story short start walking and everything and then he started doing very well um, you know bought a house and everything got married um, he may have been married then I'm not sure but Anyway, um, then another tragedy um, happened, and that was the crash of 2007. <laughs> and just like it happened with me, and he lost everything. And he said that was actually more difficult than him being in the hospital. And I just thought, wow, okay, because he felt so desperate and everything. He was at his lowest point, and he was. At that point, he was coaching clients. Yeah, he was a coach. He was a life coach. So he was saying, being a life coach, you need to be positive all the time. So how could he <laughs> be negative, you know, while coaching people? But he was losing all of his clients because they couldn't afford um, his life coaching. So uh, anyway, to make another long, long story short, he went through a, a deep depression, but then he he said, okay, well, five minutes, I have to get through this, you know, um, can't change it. And he started really writing his book. You know, he started saying, okay, what's going to change things? What are, he started uh, analyzing leaders, top leaders, and what is, you know, uh, what are some qualities in leaders? If you look, most leaders, they get up early in the morning. Um, it doesn't mean that all leaders do or you know top um, entrepreneurs and stuff but they get up early in the morning because they want to start their day out right and so he said okay getting up early at first he didn't want to do that so he tried to do everything without getting up early and then he realized no nope, and then you know he's gonna do that and then he realized that okay also um, some leaders like he got a little out of each book he read and then he said oh okay other leaders they're into um, meditation, into silence, okay? Others are into affirmations. Others are into visualization. Others are, they exercise is very important to them. 
Others, they make sure they read every day. And others, they make sure they journal. And so he, at, you know, so he was married and he was talking to his wife. And she said, well, why don't you, you know, make an acronym and, put, and do SAVERS? And that's what I talked about yesterday on my call. So it's SAVERS and, uh, and it's uh, for, the, for the first one, silence. So five minutes of silence, so meditation, prayer, whatever. A for affirmations. V is uh, for visualization. Visualize how you want your perfect day. Um, and then E is exercise. And then and you can always reflect on yesterday's, um, it's just 10 minutes from yesterday, um, live video. Okay, and then R is reading, but you can listen to Audible if you want to do that. And then S is scribing, so that's like journaling. And um, it's just so amazing. But uh, so that, so then, you know, huge success, this book. I mean, a world, world success. And the book has been uh, translated in like 53 different languages. And uh, then all of a sudden, I think in like two years ago or a year ago, he got stricken with uh, a rare form of cancer. I think it's called ALL. Um, but it's a rare form of leukemia and he had a 30% chance to live but did he let that get him down no he just <laughs> let him he uh, you know first wanted to go with the holistic approach you know and he didn't want to do the chemotherapy but the doctor said nope you have to because if you don't do this you're gonna be dead possibly within a couple weeks so then he did it and that's when he lost his hair and everything but now he's he's in remission he's awesome um, but there's so many things in this book that you're gonna love uh, so anyway <laughs> I can go on and on I just really admire this guy so I'm gonna write in my goals now that I meet Hal Elrod by the year 2019 okay um, so my topic for today I go off and off but um, this is from uh, from Hal as well as so many other books that I've read on happiness uh, what's more important is striving for happiness or striving for fulfillment and you know a lot of people are actually miserable I mean if you look at statistics and I don't know who does all these statistics on happiness I mean you know how are they doing it but most people are unhappy but you know, you look on Facebook and you look at all the postings and of course people aren't gonna post when they're unhappy. <laughs> they're gonna post when they're at parties. Or they're gonna post when they're smiling and you know, everything. Um, and then, you, you know, you somehow, when you're looking at those statistics show that you feel like you're missing out or you're looking at TV shows and, and or around the holidays and you know, and even if you have a great family, you think, oh, it should be even a little bit better that this holiday. But if you're always striving for happiness, you're never gonna be happy. So strive for fulfillment. That's what's really important. So, you know, being fulfilled is where, you know, whatever you're doing right now, and you know, of course, you may be, <laughs> of course, you're watching me. So a way for you to uh, uh, feel fulfilled is you type out what are you grateful for from yesterday and that will put you in a state of gratitude or what are you grateful for today you know right now and that will start your day out correctly um, I mean I so many times throughout the day I don't even have to I used to put a little reminder on throughout the day um, a little timer that would go off every now and then and I would remind myself about you know am I maximizing my fulfillment at that time and no matter what you're doing even if you're working even if you're you know just um, you're out there you know hiking on the trail you're watching TV even you uh, what I tend to do is I say okay on a rate of 1 to 10 how fulfilled am I you know um, how can I if I'm a 6 right now how can I make it a 10 and you could be really fulfilled just doing your dishes even so you just turn on that music or whatever 
and uh, it's incredible. And if you know, there's, you know, you're going to be spending time with, like, you know, with a family member. Um, what's special for me is spending time with my mom or my dad. And so I remind myself, how can I make this a level ten? And uh, you know, I want them to really because they're not going to be around much longer. I mean, I don't want to say much longer, but they're not going to be around forever. And uh, these these moments are so critical. Bing bing, like it'll vibrate, and then you'll know you're slouching, and then you'll start, you know, uh, bringing back your arms and everything, and then. If that really drives you crazy, I can tend to be in the training mode for six hours because I like to be reminded. <laughs> and uh, yesterday I was I was upright. Tells you how many how long you were upright. I was upright like 95% of the time. So I was only um, <laughs> the opposite direction 5% of the time. So I I'm really progressing because I'm starting to get my shoulders back, and then that also creates more energy throughout your day. Um, but you could put it in the tracking mode so it's not buzzing all the time, but you can see how your results are every day. And so it's just called Upright Go, and I think it was like $85 or maybe $100, but it's really awesome. And, uh, and it's a new invention. So I really recommend that to everyone. So, okay, I think I have really um, done a long video and I better get back because uh, I have a morning call to do. But I am thankful for all of you because you keep me pumped up. And uh, I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. And please, please, before you get off, please type in what you're grateful for from yesterday or today. Please, just do that for me. I dare you. Okay, we'll talk to you soon. Um, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.